hello everybody and welcome to uh, the uh, European Marine Board's third Thursday science webinar. Um, this is uh, the webinar series that we have once a month. Uh, my name is Sheila Heymans and I'm the executive director of the Marine Board and I will be your moderator today. Um, <clears throat> just uh, some housekeeping rules before we carry on. Um, please make sure uh, that you have your name uh, written in the uh, in the name, name section of the of the meeting uh, so that we know who you are when you're, when you're asking a question. Um, if you want to ask a question, please use the Q and A um, that should be at the bottom of your screen. Um, and if you can, please put also what which organization and country you're from. Um, and I will um, select the questions after the, the talks to, to ask the speakers. If you have any technical issues, please use the chat function. And please be aware that this webinar is being recorded and it will be available on our website and on our YouTube channel. So the first webinar today is on the, science, uh, the sustainability through creative collaboration. So it's basically uh, the end uh, performance of our two uh, of two of our artists in residence from from last year's program. Um, the artists in residence program is a program that we launched last year um, for an annual program um, that the artists join for one year. They receive a ten thousand euro grant each um, <clears throat> and. It's basically open to a wide range of artistic uh, disciplines um, to artists globally. And essentially, it is for the artists to co-create uh, with scientific collaborators something that is about inspiring um, or about the ocean. So the um, yeah, it's, it's basically focusing on in engaging um, humanity with the ocean. And, and it is a program um, uh, well, the program is a contribution of the European Marine Board's contribution to the UN Ocean Decade for Sustainable Development. Um, so our two speakers uh, today, first is Michael Begg. He um, was the artist in residence, uh, one of the artists in residence for 2022-23. Um, he's an experimental composer and sound artist from the UK. And then Lyra Litvinova, who is uh, who is also uh, one of our artists in residence. She's a visual artist and art curator from from the Ukraine. So, uh, without further ado, I think I would probably stop sharing and ask uh, that um, Michael puts on his camera. And uh, if you can, uh, if you have slides, please start sharing the slides. Thanks, Michael. Thanks very much, Sheila. Um... Okay, so um, see my slide set, okay? Yeah, we see them and it's in full screen, and thank you. Great, okay. Um, before I begin, I want to ambush the most common misconception about what I do so that none of you are left in any doubt. Um, what I do is not data sonification. What I do is data composition. It's quite different. Sonification is just the beginning of what I do. Composition involves aesthetic consideration and creative dialogue. It's music, not science. It takes a position that in our time, data provides a common vocabulary for science and art. So with that out of the way, we can begin. My period as artist in residence for the European Marine Board's Embracing the Ocean Initiative has drawn to a close. And so now is a good time to reflect on where and how this novel style of working rose and what informed this past year's work. So, origins. In 2017, I completed a sound art installation commission for the Sonica Festival here in Scotland. To be housed in the wheelhouse of the Titan Crane, 150 feet above the River Clyde and Clyde Bank's long abandoned shipyards. He gave me a key and left me free to roam around the structure on my own and make recordings of the structure for the summer. Then back in the studio I was surprised to note that there was an inherently harmonic aspect to all of the industrial sounds. There was a unity and a dynamic range that could only be described as musical. 
As an engineer subsequently told me, of course it would all sound harmonically true because good engineering demands that sort of mathematical elegance. So I became attracted to pursuing work where rather than see me endeavour to create representative music, the subject itself could raise its own voice and be heard. In our time, subjects are best known and best represented through the data that describes them. It's an objective truth, despite some claiming that data is actually little more than an opinion expressed in numbers. But how could one create music from data? Luckily, viewed as an abstraction, music, like data, is made of numbers. The A above middle C has an audio frequency of 440 Hz. Middle C, when programmed into a MIDI environment, has the value of 60. A C major scale may be represented as do, re, mi, fa, sol, la, ti, do. But for me, it could usefully be represented, represented as 60, 62, 64, 65, 67, 69, 71, 72. By scaling or mapping any range of input figures, the output can become musical information. By connecting to free online data streams such as weather reports, earth monitoring satellite positions, earthquake monitors and air quality monitors, I could generate new forms of music rooted in the information about the environment that could be transmitted through data. I was making music about the condition of the world as reported in data. This has led over time to a series of commissions and residencies bringing me into closer alignment with the global ocean science community. The Ocean Arctic Partnership with Scotland's Creative Informatics, People Ocean Planet, Marine Alliance of Science and Technology in Scotland and Blue Action EU allowed me to create a series of musical compositions based on the work of Lucretia Stulich, Tito Semler and Thomas Rakoff, all of whom at the time were at the Alfred Wegener Institute. Lucretia became a key collaborator for me and I'm happy to see that I think she was able to join us in the seminar today, so you may wish to direct questions to her after the presentation. This work arising from model projections of the impact of diminished Arctic sea ice on the weather systems of lower latitudes enabled reasonably obscure data to reach a broad range of the public through performance, radio play and worldwide record distribution. I was very fortunate in that when this commission drew to a close, the opportunity to become a resident artist for a year with the European Marine Board arose. Embracing the ocean recognised that without deep reaching societal engagement, long term sustainability, health and resilience would remain an abstract concern to those beyond the scientific community who would recognise the increasingly urgent, fragile state of our oceans. Most immediately for me, the residency afforded me the opportunity to continue working with Lucretia. Her more recent research was focused in the Antarctic and this was where we were keen to gain some attention. Moving on to a second collaboration with Lucretia brought it home to me how we had developed a process and that once this process is familiar to both scientists and artists, the process evolves, becomes crisper, more expressive we have to take a long view to this work in order to nourish its growth. Comparatively little is known to a general public about the Antarctic compared to the Arctic. The complex interplay of wind, temperature, salt density, current, thermocline and the global system of ocean currents resists simplistic narratives. However, Lucretia introduced me to Yoshihiro Nakayama from the Institute of Low Temperature Science at Hokkaido University, who became a collaborative partner in the work. He brought a useful simplicity to one of the issues of the region. The ice shelf, he said, is like the cork in a bottle of soy sauce. If the cork is undermined and pops out of the bottle, the soy sauce, which is to say the Antarctic ice sheet, will simply pour out very quickly. Needless to remind this particular audience that the consequential rise in the global sea level and the impact on the global system of ocean currents would prove absolutely catastrophic for humanity. The work produced in this residency has been collated under the name Sounding the Ice Factory. 
With Yoshi, we focused on models and observations of the thermocline in relation to Pine Island. Whilst with Lucretia, we tackled the complexities of Polynia formation and their role as ice factories. Model studies over the last two decades have repeatedly suggested that global warming effectively dampens the ice factory, making it less effective at generating the ice upon which the ice shelf depends. Musically speaking, there was no simple narrative to illustrate the dynamics of the work. I focused therefore on producing an ambient ensemble of sound, shifting, breathing, occasionally convulsing, as the numbers coming into my system made unexpected leaps. The sound palette arises from asking such curious questions as, what is the sound of ice? What is the sound of salt? Is the thermocline a string instrument, brass? keyboard. What emerged is, I think, ambient music. It is true to its location and faithful in its representation whilst remaining musically true. It does not pander to our sense of what musical time should be or musical drama, but it does invite an emotional response. And it is in that emotional response that we find engagement, eagerness to know and understand and a sufficient degree of empathy to provoke a willingness to act and to protect. This music over time has led to performance opportunities in the UK, international airplay and a number of recordings. Sounding the Ice Factory was released on Monday via Bandcamp, which allowed me to offer the recording for free and I hope you will all seek it out. It was a highlight of the year to have the work formally recognised as an action in the European Commission's mission to restore our oceans and waters, specifically contributing to the enabler public mobilisation and engagement. The work was also invited by Brian Eno on for the first Earth Percent Day event. To wrap up, this to date has been my experience as a composer of developing data-driven work in close collaboration with science. If the experience so far can be boiled down to bullet points, I might offer the following and direct it especially to those of you who may potentially be in a position to enable this work to continue to evolve and to increase its public profile and audience reach. Art can be a human response to anxiety, which aligns it well for the message arising from much of our science. The work invites curiosity and an emotional attachment to the subject and we are less inclined to harm that for which we feel attachment and connection. In working with art and artists, scientists can exploit new avenues for directly engaging with a much wider public than the scientific community we commonly allow. It provokes new creative responses in artists, whilst also inviting creative opportunities into the science. And here I must make a very brief digression to acknowledge Lira and her work in Kiev. An unexpected and very welcome outcome of this residency was to be able to use various sources of data relating to the condition of the Black Sea and the Sea of Azov, to be able to contribute sound works to her curated exhibition Under the Surface in Kiev's Museum of History this month, which I'm sure she'll be speaking to you about soon. Finally, this is activism, but it is activism that does not demand or order change. This activism draws on empathy and empathic response. What do I do, ultimately? Well, let us look to one of Lucretia's research notebooks, where long ago she gave herself the directive, make your data sing. I'm coming in well ahead of time for the first time in my life. That's me. Thanks for listening. Thank you very much, Michael. Um, and indeed, your your music in the background has been. Uh, when I listened to to some of it, I, I didn't have time to listen to all of it. But when I listened to some of it uh, before, it really uh, evoked uh, emotion. So so it definitely does what it says on the tin. Um, yeah. So I think we'll take next um, Lira's uh, talk, and then we'll have a discussion afterwards, if that's okay with you. Uh, thank you, uh, Lira. If you want to, there we go. Wonderful. <laughs> so I don't know if you have any slides, so you can also put that yeah. on. Yeah. Mm -hmm. right.
First of all, I would like to say hi to everybody whom I don't know, who just seeing us uh, from uh, this uh, online event. And um, I want to uh, say a big thank you to the EMB, uh, provide, uh, to European Marine Board, providing such residence to the artist, because it's really a huge experience for the artist. Uh, for me, it was new working with a scientist, and it also uh, such a... Um, difficult times for Ukraine now uh, and we have so many problems that, that we have to deal with uh, not only nowadays but also, but also in future. So Sorry Vera, if I can interrupt, your, your slides are not in full screen mode. I'm not sure if, if you can put it in. Okay. okay. I mean, it's fine as it is, but I don't know if you were planning to yeah, see your to... slides on oh, the side. Sorry. I, I do it not in the wrong way. There we go. Perfect. <laughs> Thank you. Yeah. Uh, thank you for saying because you're yeah, a little bit nervous because <laughs> always, uh, yeah. I'm, always talking with the people is... Um, it's very important uh, uh, to give you a message, but also it makes me nervous because nowadays we are more interactive uh, uh, during this situation. But okay, yeah. so uh, let's start. A little story, who am I, uh, what uh, um, themes I'm working, uh, and... Um, Mm, this slide uh, will, will be in this video and you will, uh, we, um, will have a possibility to know about me more. Uh, but what I need to say that um, the art makes an emotional connection uh, between um, humans and between certain themes. And it's very important, a small story from my background. Um, uh, all my childhood I spent in uh, Crimea near the Black Sea. Uh, and... Um, uh, I was born in a family of Crimean Tatar, and my father was um, born in deportation in Asia. Uh, when my parents uh, decided where to move from Asia, when the war started in uh, Fergana, uh, my parents were trying to understand where they can move. And the only way uh, and the only place where they can move was the Crimea. Why? Because my grandparents, they created this a uh, special connection for my father with the Crimea. He'd never been there, but he said to my mother, we have to go with children to Crimea. It's my own land and I want to show it to my children. And uh, this is what I'm talking about, uh, um, connection, connection between sea and uh, between people who are living on the land. Uh, the basic uh, facts that uh, knows uh, almost, I think, everybody that the 83% um, of marine litter is uh, in the Black Sea is plastic and it's uh, close to different seas, the number is uh, close to the 80%. But also uh, around 80% of the pollution is coming from the land. And from my point of view, from my artistic point of view, um, not 80% come from the land, but also, but all the uh, 100 persons of the uh, pollution is coming from the land because we people living on the land, no matter whether we are, we are coming to the sea and create their um, uh, waste. And um, talking about the marine pollution, um, nowadays we have uh, an additional, um, an additional, uh, influence to the Black Sea, the war, what war was with the Black Sea and how um, how the Black Sea changes and uh, how we, we change as Ukrainians and how we have to be changed, uh, how we have to change in future uh, because of this war and uh, because of the consequences of the war. This is small, um, small image of what happens now in Ukraine. And you can see with the red on the south of Ukraine that almost all the coast of the Black Sea, uh, that is Ukrainian coast, is occupied by the uh, Russian Federation. And um, this started not last uh, year, February, it started in 2014. And um, yeah, the war, the, the full scale war that nowadays, it also bring, um, huge problems that we will deal for years and years and years in future. And um, 
this is um, uh, here you can see the types of the pollution that comes to the sea, um, that comes from the con construction of garbage, the destruction of sewer systems. I think that um, the whole world uh, have seen what happened in Mariupol. It's uh, the city that, uh, that located on the sea, uh, on the coast of the uh, Azov Sea. In the Sea of Azov, uh, the destruction of industrial manufacturers and mining companies. Uh, for example, if we will take uh, um, what happens on the east part of Ukraine that is under occupation, uh, that is now under occupation. Um, industrial companies, uh, factories, they are destroyed and uh, destroyed in that way that through the rivers, all the chemicals, they are going into the into Sea of Azov. Another uh, situation is connected to the, um, our atomic stations and also the Chernobyl, which was uh, also occupied and uh, we will deal with the consequences of it. And nowadays we still have um, bombings and attacks and uh, there's also influence to the, uh, to the state of rivers um, and uh, then it's coming to the Black Sea and the Sea of Azov. The problem of the naval, uh, naval mines, um, we will deal, uh, as said, um, scientists, we will deal more than um, uh, 10 years uh, after the war. So if we will go through the problems that caused by the war, um, there are so huge list, so, so and uh, there is also a problem that the scientists they are not they have not um, possibility to to make um, uh, full researches to make an investigations and um, uh, to uh, to take uh, uh, data directly from the Black Sea and the Sea of Azov because um, uh, the only way they can work is the work with the data of satellites but it's not enough uh, to get the full picture of what is happening. This is the uh, small um, picture of um, what's happening now because of the Russian aggression to uh, Ukraine. According to the uh, Ivan Rusev, doctor of uh, biological science professor, and he's a chief of national natural park Tuzlitsky Limane. Um, he said that um, from 5,000 to 50,000 um, mammals are dying through the uh, war. But uh, what is the problem? Um, we can't do, um, no one can do now a huge research, uh, researches because um, uh, we have, um, we can we have an access only to the five percent to this uh, to the territory of the Tuzlevsky Limani because of the war. So we can uh, only get a small um, pieces of data and then extrapolate, but it not always work. But as an artist uh, um, as, uh, and also as an uh, eco activist, uh, I understand that um, in some cases you understand the. Uh, how huge damage we have, but you, you can't calculate, but you understand that uh, happening is a uh, exit to the territory of, um, to the territories of Ukraine and directly to the uh, Black Sea and the Sea of Azov uh, that is close to the territory of Ukraine. Uh, here also you can see um, what is said in the reports uh, uh, made by um, organization, non-governmental organization, ECA Action. Uh, and they're saying also about the problems that caused by the bombing, uh, how it destroys the infrastructure of the city and an influence to the sea. And also we have to say that the, um, sounds they created by the war, they also influence to the uh, inhabitants of the Black Sea and the Sea of Azov. We also have to say that the uh, changes that made in Crimea because, uh, during the annexation of the peninsula, it also influenced uh, into the um, 
into, uh, into the state of the uh, Azov Sea uh, and uh, the Black Sea. And you can also find a report if you're interested in this theme of the organization Crim Source. And uh, they fully discover uh, what changes are made now in Crimean Peninsula. Unfortunately, we can't, we can't find any full scale report because um, we have no uh, access to the data on occupied territories. And we can only pick small um, small data uh, pieces of information uh, um, to make a picture of what's happening. And another important point, uh, another important theme of what's happening now. This is the picture of the people uh, who uh, were died or tortured uh, by Russians. Uh, this is the scientists, this is eco-activists, and this is not full um, picture of how many people are now uh, suffering. Uh, you can see that uh, all of, uh, most of them, uh, not all, but most of them, they in the form of, um, uh, of the militarians, of the Ukrainian militarians, because on uh, 20, um, because in February last year, um, after the full scale, uh, war started. Uh, many people they come uh, to the Ukrainian um, military forces to defend their country, and uh, among these people there was also an eco activist scientist. And uh, if you um, the second picture, you see the scientist who died when he was uh, he was not he didn't come to the army, but he went to the butcher to rescue his family, and he died. And also here there is a picture uh, of the man. I don't know whether you. Uh, the second line, the fourth picture, and he was tortured in um, he was tortured in Crimea because he is an eco activist and he was collecting information about um, ecological situation in Crimea. So he was took by policemen and was tortured. I don't know whether he's alive now, but this is happening uh, very often in Crimea, and uh, there is no any information about people who missed in uh, Crimea. Uh, also, we do not have a clear information about people who lived and worked in Mariupol and um, um, small cities near the sea because not about all um, uh, eco activists, sci uh, scientists, and people who live on the occupied now, uh, on the territories that now occupied, we do not have the full information. So this is the struggle, the struggle that uh, scientists do in another way. And um, I want uh, uh, I want to, um, to show people that sometimes um, uh, from the scientist struggle, you come to the physical struggle, because uh, people aggressor who come to your land and who torture, who murder, who cut uh, off heads of the militarians of Ukrainians, and uh, who rape people. They do not care about nature at all, and this is like. Um, uh, that's why we have to defend our country to save it and then to build um, on our lands a better future than we had and also to deal with the problems that the war uh, bring to us. Uh, and I want to say that uh, the future of ocean and seas, uh, the future of the people who take care about uh, ocean is, uh, is depends on the people who take care about ocean and the seas. And um, to Mm. If we want a beautiful future built um, on them, uh, based on the sustainable development goals, we have to understand that um, there will be some people and there is some people who are implement this strategy and this, uh, create this action plan. And it's very important who people, uh, who are these people, it depends on the people who realize this strategy and who work on this thing. And that's why I post, put here the pictures of the people who, uh, who are activists, who are scientists. Uh, and so many people now are also defending our country uh, as in the army and also uh, um, as a back office working um, in the more or less peaceful territory, working there or doing their work uh, day to day. Uh, so what about the project? 
So the project consists of the uh, pictures and uh, um, paintings that I created before the project and during the artist residency, uh, it developed into creation of the um, uh, ceramic installation. And um, ceramic installation that contains of two um, ceramic panels and uh, separately located water flowers. And now I will show you how it uh, look like. What is the water flowers? It's an abstract um, artwork showing that all of us, we are coming from the water. We are contained from the water and we have to take care about it. It's a, like abstract um, uh, creatures uh, uh, that is coming out from the water and uh, where you can, um, it, and it contain the water and it can, um, it can be like a jar. And we also bringing our ideas, bringing our strategies and uh, uh, including taking care about uh, um, ocean and seas. Uh, and uh, we are also like jars that bringing to the um, to our neighbors the senses, the life, and the future. Why I choose ceramics? Uh, because, um, as I already said, that uh, most of the uh, marine pollution are coming from the land, uh, but 100 pollution maybe is coming from the uh, people, and that's why I decided to connect. The water and the land and the water is presented by the black sea water that was um, put into these uh, flowers and the land is presented by the clay originally gathered from the uh, ukrainian uh, ukrainian clay mines and um, it also symbols uh, like a symbol for me was that uh, now territories where the where the huge um, mines of clay in Ukraine, they occupied. And the ceramic, uh, um, uh, and for ceramics, it, uh, um, it will be, uh, it's now becoming and will be a huge problem um, before, before, while we do not dare the territory to get, um, to get clay with this quality that we had. And uh, that uh, it's the main, um, it's the base for the ceramics, so, and, uh, we have only on warehouses a small uh, amount of this um, uh, clay. So connecting this land and water was uh, the main idea. That's why I used uh, ceramics to implement the ideas and thoughts, uh, consulting with the scientists you know, on the themes and what we have to say. This is another example of the water flowers. Um, uh, what we need to say that um, we can't now evaluate the total um, the total uh, picture of the problems that have now uh, Black Sea and Sea of Azov. Uh, we can only make assumptions, and um, it was a huge problem with the scientists, the scientific community, to get much more information because uh, for scientists it's uh, very important to go uh, directly through the data. That's why I was also working with the eco activists who have um, uh, additional information uh, about. Um, Mm, about circumstances and situations that happen in, uh, happening in Ukraine and describing the whole picture of the, um, uh, of, the, uh, of the damaging the uh, ecosystems. One more artwork made out of clay. This is how it was uh, uh, presented on the exhibition and uh, behind the, this uh, water flower, you can see the painting that also was presented on the exhibition. Uh, I think that it's um, also very important to understand that um, we also have to work as a one school of fishes when we want to get a name. And this, was, this happens in Ukraine during the war. And also it happens in every society when we have a um, clear target and uh, understanding what we have to do. And uh, this is an important uh, moment of understanding that if you want um, uh, 
if you want to live in a better conditions. Uh, so we have to change ourselves and uh, we have to change our attitude and our habits. And uh, uh, our currently attitude and habits brought us to the situation with the high acidity of the Black Sea, I mean, the situation before war and uh, plastic pollution of the Black Sea, which is higher than the Mediterranean Sea. And uh, also uh, chemical, uh, um, pollution with the chemicals of the Black Sea that is coming from the agricultural sector. And um, also uh, not so good developed uh, uh, the work of the, working with the plastic waste uh, on the land. And after the war, we have to, um, uh, we have to build our strategy uh, on a, a new basic, on the um, understanding that uh, we will understanding that not only war uh, bring the um, bring the black sea to uh, to the situation that we have to the pollution but also our habits before war and that's why it's uh, another uh, task that uh, our societies have to do and uh, nowadays um, during the exhibition that we made i see uh, talking with the people understanding of the importance of these questions uh, because in the times of war, in the hard times, uh, you feel um, um, more sharp all the problems that you haven't seen in the peaceful times. Uh, and as I said, also, uh, there was created an installation with the two panels. Uh, this is a small panel. Each panel creates all the petals, which is connected together as a uh, puzzle. And here you can see the small, uh, the one part of, the, uh, of this panel. And another one is the big one, the meter panel. Uh, um, uh, these puzzles is like in our um, current life, uh, uniting different parts uh, of the uh, of the marine life and the human beings. So we like these puzzles. A click together connecting the whole picture and we have to understand that uh, everything is connected that's why I use this way of uh, depicting the black sea and um, also if some puzzle are taken away you can't get a whole picture you will understand that something is missing that's why um, i used such uh, visualization of the black sea Uh, it was also interesting um, experience uh, for me because um, um, during the artist uh, residency, uh, I was assisted, uh, uh, if I can say like this one, if Michael will uh, agree on this, on the creating of the composition of Duck and Tree. Actually, um, um, Mm, especially for the last exhibition, Michael created this artwork and there was um, uh, from my side, uh, um, there was there was needed some explanations of what is happening and uh, um, of what is happening and where to look because of the um, uh, activities that were held on the uh, territories of Ukraine, military activities. Uh, so this um, composition um, was um, available to hear on the grand opening of the exhibition and also all the visitors and guests of the exhibition during the exhibition could, could hear it or to go through the QR code and uh, to, uh, to save it, uh, to listen it uh, after, after the exhibition and um, this is uh, really was interesting experience for me uh, to um, analyze the uh, reaction of the guests of the exhibition um, to the art objects that were presented and uh, including art composition of Michael because uh, nowadays um, um, we are not in a usual situation and we'll talk about the exhibition in a little bit more later so uh first of all there was um uh, my solo exhibition renaissance which was held in the museum of outstanding um figures of culture of ukraine and it was uh, in the end of um, 
uh, in the end of summer and beginning of the uh, autumn. And uh, um, um, even on this exhibition, there was a first huge uh, drone attack and a few days it was, not, uh, uh, it was not working and the museum damaged uh, a little bit, uh, but um, uh, um, but, but people were visiting before it and uh, before the drone attack and uh, um, it find a reflection in the publications and um, among uh, among media and the scientific community and uh, another exhibition uh, the last exhibition was held uh, it's just finished uh, in uh, April under the surface. Uh, it was, um, so the creation of my artworks uh, then developed into the exhibition of the uh, several artists, including the work of the Michael Beck, uh, uh, but also two more artists, one poet and another uh, um, artist who work also with sculpture. Also, I'm happy that my artwork came through the open call of the gallery uh, Imagine Point and also Key Based Gallery, and it was exhibited th uh, there for um, more than two months. Uh, when we talk now nowadays about the sailing seas and oceans, uh, this is the voice of the marine biologist Yevgeny Zeki. That um, nowadays um, we uh, cut it off from the sea and we do not have um, a pure picture, pure picture a picture of what uh, of the damages uh, that uh, Russian invasion um, bring to the Black Sea and the Sea of Azov. But uh, we will have to deal it and we will have to be ready and we will have to understand how many analysis and researchers uh, have to be done. And based on this, we have to make our strategy to build our strategy. And actually on the second exhibition, uh, that's why there was um, presented the uh, Tamila Tashova. She's a, um, uh, uh, she's a, uh, a representing president in the Autonomous Republic of Crimea, uh, based in Kiev office nowadays, and they are working on the strategies of the uh, deoccupation of Ukraine and reintegration. So it's very important uh, uh, to um, uh, arise these problems, not only about um, uh, civil society, but also uh, to talk about it uh, among artists and also among the governmental organizations uh, who are working on the laws and who are working on the further strategy. Uh, this is a small picture of the about publications that made um, about uh, the exhibitions that uh, were held. And um, uh, I was expected more visitors on the exhibition because we planned it uh, uh, in the because I planned it on the first half of the um, 2022, but uh, we have problems then with electricity and so on. But and uh, so uh, it's near 130 SNT visitors uh, visited uh, these three exhibitions, but also many people uh, read information about the problem and also heard the um, a radio interview about the problem and uh, nowadays not uh, many people could uh, um, come to the exhibition because they are volunteering or um, in the army and that's why they can only uh, read an information and see what is happening and, uh, and to take part uh, uh, online but not offline and saying about uh, saying about uh, my artwork, I can't uh, can't uh, be silent that uh, the artistic community is also influenced by, influenced by the war. It's them. Uh, we can't close eyes on what is happening, and it's influenced psycholo psychologically on the people, and it's also influenced to the connections. Uh, on the one hand, um, we are active and we easily do projects and connect uh, very quickly in this um, difficult uh, situation where we are now. But also uh, in some cases, uh, some questions are coming um, backwards. And um, it is very important to say now that, the, that we have to say now about sustainable development after the war now, because strategies and plans, and uh, uh, they do not change us uh, during one day. And also we, have to talk about it to be uh, 
to show the youngest uh, people um, what is important because they live now during this war and they lived before uh, during the occupation of the territories and they have to understand that these themes is important and they have to be um, connected with these themes uh, otherwise we will lose uh, the young uh, the young generation we will lose these connections uh, and for these people are now uh, struggling, these people who suffering from the war, they also, they also, we are not, we also we now working for our future being uh, in the army or um, being uh, at our homes. Thank you for your attention. Sorry, maybe it was too, too long. <laughs> and, um, thanks, Lira. No, that was great. I mean, I think if you if you have the chance to make the rest of the world aware, then you should definitely take it. So so that was good. Um, so thank you very much. It was really good, and and I really loved your your artworks as well. Um, I know uh, that there's one question in the Q and A, um, which is at the moment for Michael. So Michael, I don't know if you want to put your um, video on as well. Um, and then if um, if anybody else has questions, please remember to put them in the Q and A. I'll ask Michael's question and then I'll, um, I have some from, of my own, obviously. <laughs> so, uh, Michael, the question is from Chris Fremantle, who is um, on the, I don't know if you've met Chris yet, but he's actually on our um, committee for the uh, Artists in Residence program. So maybe you have. Yeah, I know Chris, I know Chris, yeah. Yeah, so the question is that, uh, and I'm going to read it out. Brian Eno said in a discussion with Alan Moore, one of the things that characterizes all new forms of music is an accompanying new way of listening. Every new musical proposition about uh, every new musical proposition about one what you what you want to about what you do as a what you do as a listener probably. Um, do you have you noticed that there's a new way of listening? Um, <clears throat> I do, yes. I mean, it's. I felt myself in a privileged position because what I could do once I had the program up and running, I could bring the data in and scale it appropriately to be music, and then I would map that to various synthesizers and um, samplers and what have you. Um, the privilege of my position was that I could just let it run in the morning and just carry on with other business during the day, listening for how it would change. And I could go up at any time and change the parameters, change the scaling, change the instruments and let it run again. And so the listening experience for me was, was a lot less um, passive than it traditionally is. You know, as a listener, you put on a CD or a record or press play on your MP3 machine. And then that's it, that's, that's the limit of your interaction. Whereas I could start to devise of a potential future where you would buy a hardware machine that would plug into your hi-fi that would allow you to change the parameters of an incoming data stream. And the way that I started to imagine this was that, you know, you can connect to live APIs with weather and climate information coming in and you could, you could adjust those parameters accordingly. So effectively you would be taking the moment at hand, the day at hand outside your window and creating your own soundscape for it as you as you progress through your day and that struck me as a lot more uh proactive and engaging as a listener it was much more a, a kind of collaboration between programmer and listener mm -hmm. and it exploits the fact that so much of music making these days is programming yeah yeah i know nothing about music making music but i was just thinking as you were saying that in fact, if I listen to music, uh, if I might sing along badly. <laughs> so, so maybe there is some interaction anyway. Um, yeah, so so I think that's that's quite, uh, it, 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 it kind of leads on a little bit to my, my next question. Maybe, uh, maybe it's a bit tangential. Um, but but my, my next question was really about in your in your discussion, you said um, that you kind of have to take a long view of, of making this music. It's a, it's not something that you can do really quickly, which kind of leads to the, to the thoughts that, that uh, at least in a scientific, from a scientific point of view, transdisciplinary science is something that takes much longer than doing just science. You know, 
if you if I work with with ecologists, then you can shorthand it and you can kind of quickly discuss things. But if you work with a economist, for instance, you really have to have a long discussion. Um, and so do you think that the working with scientists as part of your art creation uh, takes a long time as well? And 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 do you think that's part of that, that it's that it, that you kind of have to um, yeah. Um, it's kind of a complex question because it could be taken in different levels. I mean, it was it was actually quite quick to get sounds up and running from the data, um, and then what became interesting was the the interaction between the person, the scientist who collected the objective mm -hmm. data, and me, the musician who was making mm -hmm. ostensibly a subjective response, mm -hmm. and that by teasing into the middle no man's land between those territories you can actually find new material that is both objective and subjective mm -hmm. that it's not the simplistic truth of what a single row of numbers is actually telling you about a situation but it's that enriched by the human experience of it mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. and that's where it was taking time and that's why it was um that's why it was so good to be able to take it forward into a second project because mm -hmm. we already had the foundations in place. Mm -hmm. And I think, you know, we're, we're still in the foothills. We're still in the very early days of what this kind of bringing together of science and arts and from my own perspective and music is, is really mm -hmm. going to be fit for discovering. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Um, and it does need nurture. I mean, I think people, people find it, difficult to think of music as being anything other than how they experience it today, which is recording, which is sitting down and putting something on or going to a show and listening to it. And really that's only been the case for just over a century. And music has been around obviously much longer than that. And it does constantly change its shape in really quite revolutionary ways, mm -hmm. purposes according to who's commissioned it. Uh, and and how it's played and what is the social context of its of its occasion, mm -hmm. and um, I think we have to be open to the idea that that evolution is going to continue, and it won't just be passive recordings that have been made in isolation that are going to hold sway in the future. It is going to become more interactive. Yeah, and science and art close together is one way of assuring that there's a consensual deep truth under the work that we're producing. Yeah, I mean, it makes me wonder about the possibilities of using music um, to to really, you know, in, in the in the mission ocean, they have this digital twin of the ocean. I mean, it, it would be kind of nice if we had a sound uh, twin of the ocean, <laughs> which would be quite nice to to be able for people to, to visualize how yeah. the ocean sounds, not just how it sounds, but how, you know, how it all comes together, like an orchestra versus one string or one string instrument or something. Um, I think, I think, I think the, yeah, I think the key thing is, is that the sense of transportation that it immediately provides, you know, yeah. if you're in any situation and then you put headphones on, it yeah. changes the relationship to the space that you're in. Yeah. Uh, you know, emo uh, music cannot be beaten for the immediate emotional impact yeah. and yeah. sort of provoke so it's very useful in those sort of contexts yeah. and that kind of leads me to a question that is related to your combined um sort of artwork that happened in in kiev uh, lira do you think that um having the music there made a difference to how people experience the art and and the the whole experience of being there uh yeah first of all there was many questions how michael uh, worked with it because also artists visited it uh, and it's very interesting how this magic is coming how from the data yeah this um yeah, music and uh, also i have to uh, share my personal experience uh, uh, the artwork that michael created uh, um, connected to the black sea during the um, uh, it's summer months it was summer months uh, Michael took uh, it's much different from what we listen now and uh, really uh, these artworks they depicted the situation and um, I had um, 
but the news uh, the day before the exhibition, we, we were installing uh, the exhibition and I've got news that my friend died on the war. And I was uh, so much uh, emotional on this, but during, and we were testing also, it was the last day test uh, of the music and it was so calm in me because it, it's like, uh, I, I don't know how, how it works healing, but uh, I, uh, I think that I was needed it. And um, uh, this is was so directly in the point what what uh, what have to be uh, to uh, to communicate the, uh, the situation to the people because uh, some people they are more oriented on the visual, some more on the three D. It means uh, sculpture, for example, objects, not uh, paintings. And uh, you have to knock into the hearts to the people uh, to raise these problems. Uh, to raise these uh, topics because, um, uh, of course, people more thinking about their families, how they they that they have to lie, and uh, one of the pe persons uh, who was on the first exhibition uh, that was um, in the summer, and one person uh, told me she said. Um, uh, why we have to take care about uh, mammals, dolphins, uh, uh, we have to take, to take care about us. And there was uh, after this, the dialogue uh, um, between uh, uh, she and me, and I was explaining why, why it is important because we can't uh, just cut small pieces. And also, um, uh, I reminded myself, uh, I, I'm also was a di dialogue with myself, why, why it is important now to say about ecological problems and why it is important to involve such uh, artists like Michael, um, which brings additional angle to this problem. Uh, because... Um, we do not change very quickly, and we have to clear. We have uh, we have to have a clear understanding of, of we have to change our minds, because so many years we were thinking um, about um, other problems, more economically day to day lives, and as I said before, the Ukraine is so huge country territorially and uh, by, by territory, and uh, people are different, have different problems, and which on the one part was not. Uh, uh, was not very important for the people who lives on the other parts of Ukraine. And we were a little bit separated with, with all other day-to-day problems. But nowadays, everything is this, the war connected us together, showing that the sea is important for the whole Ukraine. The, um, uh, the marine pollution problem, it comes from the land, from the whole Ukraine, that the war brings additional um, challenges to Ukraine directly connected to the Black Sea and the Sea of Azov. How we will deal with these territories, uh, uh, for example, the Sea of Azov, um, where um, uh, comes all these chemicals and uh, it can be the Dead Sea if it will be through several years. And we also have to um, understand that the people who are now come to the war, they were not militarians, but so many people, they come to war. They're struggling for the better future. And we are who are not now with a, um, uh, with a weapon and who are sitting in our homes and working on, um, and working on different spheres. We have to make this future uh, possible because if we will not change our habits and our attitude to the problem now, we will not change it uh, in some one day. So we have to make these movements by doing small steps. It's um, uh, sustainable development of, of the mind, but not only um, uh, not only um, not only the country or the seas or, or the lands, and um, mm, yeah. And that's why, yeah, it's very important to show it in different ways. And uh, uh, also that's why uh, it, it was very uh, right decision to make this group exhibition and show Michael's work. Also, I was working um, on the um, situation that Michael could have possibility to come, but mm -hmm. have here a short term planning. And that's why it was not uh, possible. Yeah. Final. Thank you very much. Sorry, I think we are running out of time. So I thought that while you're speaking, I should uh, put up the, the slide just for the next um, uh, for the next webinar. Um, so I think there is still a few questions for you, uh, Lyra, but I think we can answer these to people uh, via email, if, if that's okay, just so that we, we stick to our one hour slot. 
Um, but thank you very much. Thank you both very much for all of the hard work, for the wonderful artworks you created and, and for the wonderful webinar. And um, yes, we will definitely continue following you on social media and make sure that we, you know, announce all of your, your works and continue the collaborations. And uh, I'm really looking forward to what the, the next year's um, uh, artists and residents will produ produce. And hopefully we'll get more fruitful interaction between the artists, because I think that's one of the wonderful things about this. That that probably wouldn't have happened if we didn't have this uh, this artist in residence program. Um, so at the moment, I just want to say that our next uh, webinar will be on um, Thursday, the fifteenth of June. We um, in May we have a, a public holiday in Belgium, so we won't um, have a uh, a webinar then. But we will have one on our offshore renewable energy document, um, and our speaker will be Beth Scott, and she will be talking about marine spatial planning and the environmental impacts of offshore renewable energy. Um, so, Lyra, you see, it's not just it's not just war. <laughs> There's more to worry about, um, and and probably that will come your way once you've sorted out the war as well. So, thank you very much, and uh, wonderful to to see you all. And uh, we'll we'll speak to you again in June. Thank you. Bye bye. Thank you very much.